Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die Presents The Titan's Gift, Season 3, Episode 14. I am your DM and host, Marty, joined by the full Seattle crew, Sans Mark. How is everyone doing on this fine Tuesday? Woo! Mics are hot, right? Yeah. Mics are hot. <laughs> Mics are hot. That's right. <laughs> First, first day of the Kraken's uh, initial season, from what I've heard, Marty. Yep, they've got five uh, away games before they have their first uh, home game on the 23rd, I think. Uh, yeah, so I've, I'm recording the first game. I'll watch that after we play some D&D. <laughs> might be might be hearing them cheering from down down the, <laughs> no, no, the stadium a, a, away ga away games uh, their first oh, yeah, their well, first away game is in vegas that's true, that's true. <clears throat> they're playing the second newest team in the league which i thought was a fun first game oh that's cool yeah nice they're probably gonna get their asses kicked because vegas is a really good team yeah. but vegas we shall see good. we shall see <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm back in Seattle. It's good to be back. Uh, the house is all set up. Um, and I'm back here for a while, which will be good. We're going nice. to record. Welcome back. To, yeah, we're going to record tonight's game and we will, I think on Saturday, I've got a little bit more set up and prep to do for Grimstone Chronicles. We'll uh, start restreaming our games. Uh, but this game will appear on YouTube after, uh, after I upload it. So I haven't seen guys in a while how is everyone doing let me start with uh uh let's see luke what's going on with you oh just hanging out just uh excited it's october it's uh one of my favorite ty times of year fall setting in it's getting nice and cool got some nice soups going you know just living my best life at home over here it's good you're all settled in yeah, it's pretty settled in, pretty settled in. There's, there's a lot of, uh, the pine trees are dropping a ton of needles on the house because they got, like, really stressed with all the heat this summer. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I clean them up, and then, like, the next day, there's just, like, you can't even see the ground anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of that, you know. <laughs> your, dreams, your, your trees support job creation. <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Max? It's uh, really good, though. Max, what's new with you? Uh, did I tell you guys we ripped out the whole backyard? Yeah, you <laughs> told something like that. Yeah, we, told, we tore out the whole backyard and redid it with like all brand new fresh sod and stuff because it was all basically dirt and mud. And I'm oh, really yeah. glad the timing we did it because it was like right before it started to rain a whole bunch. So nice. uh, the dogs aren't tracking in nearly as much crap as they were before, which is great. Um, yeah. Did some OT this weekend, so not a lot of super exciting stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, to finishing this alchemy tower for sure. <laughs> Highlight yeah. of the week. Yeah, this is going to be wicked. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what's, what's new, man? Man, I started playing NetHack again. Um, <laughs> you know, old, old school, yo. And uh, uh, had, a, had a guy go on a really great, um, you know, I had a few wishes. I had great AC. Um, I was protected against almost everything. Uh, I drowned on the Medusa level when I dug down in the, in the wrong place. What? So yet a, yet another stupid death, um, which is kind of how NetHack goes. You get unlucky and stupid in the beginning, uh, and and you know after you've built up enough resistances, your deaths are just stupid, um, almost always preventable. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and there you go. Nice, Neil. I'm good, man. Yeah. Uh, we had our fence installed, so first of the projects on our to-do list finally ticked off, and I'm super happy with the result, uh, although um, it is a big cost and a big fence. <laughs> and, of course, um, it doesn't prevent the animals from getting out because we only covered three-quarters or three-fourths of the, of, the, of the yard. We kept the boundary at the back uh, because it's... We didn't add a fence there because we've got a whole bunch of trees and shrubs and beauty growing up there. But it means that there's still a place for the animals to get out. What is discouraged now is the dogs won't see somebody walking in the street and chase after them or chase to the neighbor's house or the neighbor's yards when their dogs are outside. So at least that bit is sorted. Um, <laughs> but, you know, not all the projects are done yet. I'm still waiting for somebody to come do some concrete work. Still waiting for a tub for a cover for my tub, so 
there's still a bit of things that needs to happen and so on. We've been chatting offline <laughs> with generators and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm almost settled in. Indoor, at least I've hung up my Metallica poster, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's when, signed. When, it's signed. Some when you're at wall it. hangings, then you know you're pretty much done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wall hangings and buying plants. Yep. <laughs> that's our thing, apparently. <laughs> yep. That makes sense. So, so welcome back to Seattle, Marty. So, when you said, uh, you know, this is the whole Seattle crew for once, you included yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yep, I'm one one foot in Canada, one foot here, and that's the way it'll be. Uh, from now on uh nice at least for the next i don't know seven years i think is the contract i signed for season's tickets for kraken so <laughs> <laughs> i can always resell them but <laughs> i gotta lock in those prices man <laughs> uh yeah okay what, what happened last uh game we're gonna go back one game yeah so last game was called Name, Rank, and Assignment. The professor creates some magical mayhem and some illusory slander against the Sovereign Queen. Thurgus leads the jerks emeritus through the sewers to the underground entrance to the Tower of Alchemy, breaching the tower in hunt for revenge. And uh, I think where we left off, the party had um, come up through the sewers, um, broke into the tower destroyed an alchemical golem on the main level scared off a lesser alchemist and killed a few that were basically down there selling goods you crossed by uh, what looked like a couple of death carts um, you found some suspicious clothing in the sewers um, if you don't recall there were a lot of tunics and um, regalia of uh, uh, the patrian guard that were down the, gar the garbage chute. Uh, you made your way up one tower. There were very strange, there's a very strange kind of shimmer in the, um, uh, in the boundary where the door, uh, where the door space is and strange echoes along the, um, along the spiral staircase that led up to this, uh, to the second floor. You also heard those echoes in the tower that you broke into. Um, we're gonna call this tower Tower B, just for lack of, uh, uh, and the tower that you broke into, we'll call Tower A. And the one that you haven't seen yet is Tower C. Uh, the Jerks Emeritus went to the second floor and they broke into an area that Thurgus has seen before. He injured, uh, half remembers these stone slabs. Um, while there was a cadaver of one of your, um, your delegation on one of these slabs when you had broken out of this place, uh, it is not there this time. There are all sorts of other bodies though, some of which your keen senses had let you know were actually like lifting up their heads slightly and sort of peeking as the door opened. Um, and some of the cadavers in loose robes are pretending to sleep or pretending to be dead. They are very cadaver looking. Uh, and then there is a shambolic alchemical golem that, uh, that kind of uh, bubbles awake when the door opens. Um, I think it's initiative. They saw you, you saw them. Uh, you do have some spells running. I think there's a haste vomit twin and a greater invisibility running on uh, on Henry as per rounds per level and your other spells blazing are on your character sheets. The first to act is Mokronom. Uh, uh, Mokronom slides off of Zephyros' shoulder and he's looking at the shimmer in the doorway and a little pseudopod goes through the shimmer. Oh, I don't know what this is, but I don't think it's a trap. Uh, is, is it, is it like a, uh, like a dimensional sort of, sort of thing, like connecting to, two places that aren't physically next to each other? Oh. I'll take a look. 
You, you helped Thurgus kill everything. Makarnam, so he hopped off the shoulder, he had a look, and then he's going to um, um, kind of waddle into the room and plop himself off to the side. He, do, he did it in a way that it sort of looked like one of you kind of threw a bag into the side, and he's pretending to be Very a bag. nice. And his disguise check for pretending to be a bag. A bag. I haven't seen him turn into anything not very pot like in a while. Is no four bad. is four is forty two. Yeah, he's just he's just like he's just like a leather rucksack at this point in time. Kinda looks like his token, <laughs> but uh Uh sound between this room and the other room is a little bit weird. It's a bit echoey, um, which may be providing hints. The next person to go is Thurgus. Spells blazing, his adamantine greatsword out. These things. Oh, hell no! Uh, I'm gonna make. Yeah. I'm gonna make two attacks on. Actually, I'm gonna take my haste attack first on the guy on the bottom left. Are you gonna move in? Nope. Oh, are you I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna cork the door. You're gonna you're throwing your sword. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm gonna launch a shard. Slightly less because my dex isn't as high as my strength, but I'll survive. Plus thirty-two. Oh, that's for some reason I got an extra letter in there. What? Apparently. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's 49 hit. Yeah, so <laughs> there is some sort of distortion. Uh, your, your thing isn't flying as true as it should have been, but you already saw a Mokronom move through the doorway, so you adjusted for that. Then they're also laying down, but they're flat-footed, so you skewer... Which one? This one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah! Yeah, by, the, by its screaming. It's, it's not a regular corpse. Uh... 42 damage. 42 points of damage. The, yeah. the sword rips right through it, and then I think it disappears afterwards, or does it go flying back into your hand? Oh, it's, uh, so actually, when I swing it, yeah. like a crystallized version of it launches ah, out okay. of the sword. So, as the thing is getting up, it's still moving, but you have you have a sword-sized hole through its its guts. You can see all sorts of putrid, um, uh, putrid pablum-like uh, material kind of leaking out of it. It doesn't look too good. Uh, you will say you bloodied it. Um, okay. I'll take an action to move past the shimmer then. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a slight, there's a slight um, wash of magic that passes over you when you pass through the uh, the threshold, and the distortions on hearing are gone. Okay. Except for your companions. Uh, uh, so that was Thurgis. Uh, that's only two actions. Okay. Paste it in one. I'm going to take an attack at this guy. You can do these as attack actions? Yeah. It just gives it a range, a thrown range increment. Okay. Which is pretty great. Uh, minus five. Uh, that's a miss. Yeah, AC 22, even with their... Uh, they're flat-footed. Uh, this grazes its shoulder and doesn't do any structural damage. Okay. And then... Uh, actually, I'll just make the last attack at it. Haze attack? Okay. I want to soften things up for fireballs. You know how it goes. Oh, how do I keep getting extra letters? What is going on here? Uh, typing. Yeah, typing is hard. 29's a hit, though. Flat-footed. Sweet. 42. <clears throat> Another 42. Okay. Weakening this thing, you take off uh, its arm at the elbow. Yeah. Its hand kind of crawls off the table and then curls up and sort of dies. Uh, it's looking at its own uh, uh, decapitated hand and then hisses at you. A long tongue lolls out of its head. Senior I don't think our paladin would mind if I didn't ask you to surrender. <laughs> uh, there are no senior alchemists in the room. Bukerbeck is not here. Where's Bukerbeck? He is not here. 
Well, uh, he didn't want to come to the all... tower. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, why would... No. Oh, he, yeah. He didn't want to come with us. We're, we're screwed with commerce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the alch- plausible deniability. The alchemical. Shut the shop open. The alchemical golem. This one doesn't seem to be full of elemental type fluids. This one seems to be full of strange embalming fluids. And there's also some uh, containers inside of the uh, alchemical golem that have just like putrid guts rolling around in it. Uh, hold still, you will be embalmed. <laughs> okay, so it scuttles out to there. I guess it continues its scuttling. Thurgus, what's your reach? Uh, ten foot. Ten? Okay. Yeah. It stops there. Um, some of the putrid liquid. Hold still. Some of the putrid liquid goes into this uh, into this piston and then into a. Uh, a... It's going to try to stick you with it. AC twenty five misses. <laughs> you basically push its hand out of the way. <laughs> so when this liquid comes out, hold still. Absolutely not. You're never sticking me again. Yeah. Okay, uh, Thurgis, you don't like how these ghouls move. They all kip up. As free actions. Oh, gross. They all then enter a... Well, I guess they had to do this at the beginning, but they enter into their crane-style stances. And then... Uh, kip up as free, enter their stance, which means they have two actions. So they're gonna start coming in, and they're gonna start tumbling in towards Thurgus. Thurgus, what's your CMD? My CMD? Yep. Thirty-eight. Whew. Okay, this one is not gonna quite make it uh, to here. I am gonna spend an immediate action though when the first one comes at me. Yep. To activate my judgment. Okay. So that's my reaction, and then I still oh. have a. I have. Four attacks of opportunity after that. All right, you you roar in defiance, and uh, the uh, power of the blood bear swirls around your weapon. Yeah, so what? I think I think my protection one will actually affect AC and CMD. Uh, yeah, my CMD goes up to forty one for what it's worth, but my okay. AC is the main reason why I'm activating it. Bard song is currently down. I'll bring it back up on on my turn. All right, one, two, three, four, five, five at one d twenty plus. I'm gonna choose sacred justice, which is the chance to hit one. Okay, since, uh, since I see crane stuff. These five are tumbling in, and what was the CMD? Uh, forty one. Uh, two of them make it, and three of them fail. Oh, okay. Then I could take three AOs. Is that what I heard? Yep. Okay, I'll choose to power attack this round. So where are we at? That brings me down to 33. One, two, three. Low is a 36. Okay, so uh, AC with their crane style would be AC, <laughs> damn it, their ACs are 36. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here, uh, 49, oh, why is it not, oh. All right, yeah. okay, so these two are missed, and then 49, basically these two stumble out of the way, or tumble out of the way, and then your, your long swipe with your blade cleaves into the other three. 49 damage, that ghoul is still standing, but it's got a massive wound. Same with the 47. And a 43. And the 43 cuts that ghoul's head off. That one was already injured from your uh, uh, from your force attack. Okay, uh, these horrible ghoulish monks are going to attack. You got rid of the flank. Okay, and... 
Hmm. They are going to use Stunning Fists. Oh, good. This is against regular AC. <laughs> AC 23, 23, 27, and 23. No. Okay. So they are punching and kicking and clawing at your armor. You're just too big. Uh, you're just too big and well armored uh, for them. I could do this all day. <laughs> they don't seem to like your your sass. Uh, professor. Okay. I think uh, the professor is going to uh, move in. He's going to fly as the tiny professor up. And above Thurgis, uh, right here, he'll occupy his space. Okay. Uh, so that will be my move action. I will quick draw as a free action my wand of command dead uh, as part of this. And I will, I, I won't say, I, I think we're telepathically bonded, though. I, 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 there may be some whispers of, is that, do you hear him off in the distance? Is he watching over you, Thurgis? Could it be? And I will magic combat to do a wand and a spell, and the spell will be Waves of Blood, and the wand will be Command Dead. I'll, I'll hit the one in the back line that hasn't taken any damage yet and try and command it. Okay, where is the Waves of Blood happening? Uh, it's a 30-foot cone-shaped burst that emanates from me. Okay, which, which So direction? it'll go... I. I'm trying to go and hit the maximum number of guys. I, I think by going in like the peak of where Thurgis is, yeah, yeah. exactly. That's it. Yeah, that seems okay. And they get a save, but you you don't turn visible because you've got greater invis running. Good. Yes. Correct. All right. And what's the effect of the waves of blood? Uh, it's going to be a bull rush combat maneuver on anything in the area. It's going to be caster level plus int modifier for. I, uh, CMB, which I think is uh, 22. Okay, go right ahead. Now. Go ahead and roll. Ah, uh, 25. <laughs> I think it's okay, that, still... that washes the monks and the alchemical golem in blood, but they don't get pushed back. Yeah. Um, any creature in this area must make a fortitude ever be sickened but i think since they're undead and alchemical golems that probably doesn't matter too much oh they they have seen their fair share of gore and these creatures are not affected any further so uh is is there difficult terrain here or is it just a big wet spot oh uh it's I just a close. reflex save i think or something uh the area is covered by remain slick for one round requiring a successful dc 10 acrobatics Trying to move within it. Okay. Any creature falls prone due to failing the check must succeed at another fortitude save or become sick until it stands up. Okay. Yes, thank so, you. So it is slick for a bit. Uh, yeah. Darien is in sword form. Uh, uh, huh. We'll also try and command undead. Oh, that's right. Monk number three. Uh, he is intelligence, so he does get a will save. Um, he, it has a power. No, this is necromancy, not enchantment. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. That's funny. Um, okay, he gets a 25 on the save, though. Uh, the DC would be... Uh, it's coming from a wand, but with my... Um, yeah, command my it is second power. level, so that's DC 12 plus your int modifier plus anything that affects uh, necromancy. 11 uh, is my imp modifier, and I don't I don't think I have anything to give me a boost for necromancy. DC 24, okay. Are you sure it's 11 and not 13? Uh, oh, is there something running on the chart good, that I'm not accounting for? Good hope might count. That, that would increase your intelligence, though. No, uh, it doesn't increase your DCs. It doesn't increase DCs, right, right. It does increase int checks, but it doesn't increase DCs. Yeah. Cool. So right. 22, okay. 
24, 25, 26, 32, which is plus 11. Okay. Uh, it makes it safe. It rolled really well. Uh, it shakes its head. And it's now looking around uh, at where the sound came from. And it seems to be looking... It seems to be <laughs> looking above Thurgus. <laughs> uh, what... Yeah, so you moved and made noise in combat, and a spell came. Ah, uh, I don't know if I made any noise. The waves of blood would have been silent. Uh, I would have made a noise to cast the wand. Okay, this thing I don't even have to roll for its perception check. It it is it is looking right at your space, Henry. Got it. Ah, uh, with haste, do we get another move or another no, you, action? You, I've, how you, does haste you work? You get another in? attack action. Got it. Okay, got it. It increases uh, your movement speed by 30. Yep. Yeah, that but that's doesn't still really one move action. Yeah, I'm done then. All right, Zephyros, uh, still on the this side of the Strange Shimmer, what are you doing? Zephyros is going to cross over the Strange Shimmer. Okay. And then he's going to... Oh, I'm on select. There we go. And then hopefully at some point... Uh, let me point... At some point, he's going to see what's going on here after he crosses over. Uh, the here. shimmer is is transparent. It's just um, um, it, it's just obscuring vision a little bit. Okay. Yep. So Zephyrus is since he can see what's going on, he notices that there's a whole line of them lined up in a straight line this way. Mm -hmm. So Zephyrus is going to move away, use his overland flight to go over here, okay. and then he's going to cast a bolt that hits everybody in this line all right so that and he's gonna that movement flying over does provoke an attack of opportunity from what it looks like uh one ghoul if if you squeezed it will be one and you'll have a minus four to your ac if you're not squeezing two of them will get their attacks of opportunity but at your regular ac so did you squeeze or did you not uh I don't think Zephyrus would have squeezed. Okay, to be so honest. you, so you went flying in above Thurgis, and yeah. you have these ghouls both kind of jumping up at you to try to claw at your feet. Uh, he doesn't walk. What makes you think he squeezes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly my thinking. He's like, this is not elegant. He's not going to squeeze. Okay, so, so, so you barrel in there. You're just so concerned about lining up the perfect evocation spell that these two ghouls kind of yeah. claw, claw at your feet as you go by. Uh, let me make their attack rolls two at 1d20 plus 16, uh, AC 28 and AC 18. I think 28 will hit. 18 is going to miss pretty much regardless of what I have running most of the time. Okay. And then, um, is it within five, the 18? Uh, the 18, so you would have to hit 24, so no. Okay. Uh, so there is a mirror image running, so I'll roll a d5, and one of your images is gone. All right, I've got three images remaining. All right, you fly into this room immediately. Uh, you guys have life bubbles, so I can't describe smell. Never mind. Uh, it is, this room is it's cleaned very harshly, but there's a lot of grime in the and in the grout uh, in, in the grout uh, lines, um, and you just get the feeling that. That a lot of cadavers have been um, have been embalmed or dissected in this room. Okay. There are little bits of hair and nail and things kind of off in off in the corners, and these uh, even some of the stone slabs have signs of cutting on them. Uh, more concerning are these ghoulish things. All right, and what spell are you casting? So Ferris is casting a lightning bolt, and he's using versatile evocation to change it from electricity to fire. So there's a fireball. Nice. Yeah, so it's a fire line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, a massive line of fire. These um, these ghoulish things are, are moving quite quickly. Uh, One might even say a base to the ring. Yep. There are four ghouls that are going to try to get out of the way of the fire, the line of fire. Sorry for that beep. That's my oven. I'll turn it off in a bit. All right. And the DC of your fireball, uh, I rolled seven. We'll just take the first four. One, two, three. Yeah, so the DC is going to be 20 four. plus spell level, which is three, plus 20, uh, two for ev evocation spell. So this will be 25. 
All right, two evade, but two of them take it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Looks so like... Which two takes it and which two one evades in, it? One in three will take it, so give me some damage. What about uh, the golem? I'll roll the for the golem in a second. All right, okay, so the damage is going to be 10d6 plus 5. I'm just looking for my Twitch channel. 40. Okay, the first ghoul monk that was jumping at you didn't have time to evade. It kind of landed on the ground, and its head was incinerated by your by your firebolt. Uh, this I like one, that firebolt. <laughs> this, this one, this one ducked. This one ducked, and then this one failed to duck, and it exploded with forty damage. Uh, the fire, I believe, just washes off the alchemical golem. Um, immune to spells. Yep, it it's some of the liquids seem to be heated a little bit, and uh, it looks around. Uh, and then the last one had enough time to scamper out of the way. That's still pretty good. Okay, that was uh, Zephyrus moving and casting a spell. He has a haste attack, although I think he's out of reach out of everything at this point. So can I still do something that has an immediate action? I just want to take well, a Well, you could have positioned yourself here, because I think you automatically make the concentration check for uh, third level spells. What's your concentration? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Uh, let me just check. Uh, I have to search for it. That's fine, I got it. Uh, plus, you got it? Plus 24, 25 for evocation. Yeah, okay, so you do have an attack with your haste. If you have something oh. in hand. All right, uh, yeah, I have my staff. Uh, it's, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm doing that magical thing where my staff is inside of my scythe. So I could take a swing at this ghoul monk from where I'm standing. I, it's within cool. reach. Uh, it, is Bard Song running? I forget. Bard Song is not currently running. But, I'll take this off for the... There is a good hope and a haste. I yes. believe so. That's a plus three on top of your. Uh, I'm just trying to find my attack routines. I've reorganized my. So this, so on my side, I am usually plus fifteen on the first attack, plus ten on the second attack, secondary attack. I'm guessing, and would this be even less because this is my haste attack? Nope, haste. Yeah, it's your first attack for the round, so it's. Uh... Your Plus fifteen. Time. Yep. With good hope and haste, you've got three more, I think, on that. All right. So plus eighteen. Well, it evaded your firebolt, but it's not evading the upward swing from your uh, from your horrid scythe. Uh, do damage. Uh... It, it does not take the necromantic damage. Ah, oh, so I've got to take off the necr necromantic damage. That means it is 2d6 plus 11. Plus good hope would be an extra 2. All right. 22. 22 damage. You uh, you injure it, uh, kind of opening up some of its ribs. Yeah. Its long tongue licks at its own wound in a gross way. Uh, there are no lesser alchemists in this room. Uh, I just want to see spell recall for Zephyrus. I think that is an immediate action. Swift action. Is it a swift? Okay, never mind. So then I can't do it now. Fair say. Okay. I'm going to start Bard Song. Okay. And I'm going to detect in Viz and look at this uh, shimmering, this strange shimmer. I'm sorry. Detect magic. Detect magic. Not detecting biz. Okay. Uh, so there is the presence of magic here. That's the first yeah. round of. Uh, we'll we'll keep looking at it. Okay. Um, there there are quite a few auras, but the most potent one is definitely. Yeah. The doorway. I'll, I'll even take um I'll even take a a, a five or a, a a couple of steps here. So I can look at an angle that that doesn't include uh, 
I don't think you, I don't think you can take any steps. Detect magic is two actions as a standard action, and then use oh, bard yeah. song as a move. Right. You're done. Yeah, yeah. You have Absolutely. a haste attack, but uh, nah. All right, cool. this this system got rid of a lot of the five foot stepping. Uh, yeah, yeah. Makronom. Makronom is going to shift up. One of his pseudopods comes out, and he is going to. Mm, do we just hit the ghoul? I think we just hit the ghoul. Yeah, he's got a plus 20 slam. Wow. Okay, uh, plus Bard Song and, or not Bard Song. Oh, yeah, you started Bard Song. Yeah. Bard Song, Good Hope, yep. and Haste. He hits the ghoul for AC 39. Wow. Um, he does 1d6 plus 12 damage plus 4. Bard Song's plus 2 or plus 3? Three plus three. Hmm. He does eighteen damage to the ghoul. Ghoul's now bloodied. I don't know if he wants to grapple the ghoul. Makronoms ain't worse. Oh, I... Yes. These <laughs> things are weird. Uh, he's just going to try to hit it again because his attack bonus is really high. <laughs> Second attack hits. Uh, he's basically got a tentacle wrapped around the thing's neck and is trying to twist the, the creature's uh, head. Uh, and it's it's looking really bad. Thurgus? Uh, I'm going to make four attacks. I'm going to go ham on the alchemical golem. Okay. Uh, I will be power attacking this turn. Uh, but I have Inspire Courage. So yep. I think that yep. offsets yep. a good chunk of that. Yeah, it actually negates my mischance. Minus three plus three, so I'll take it. So I'm at thirty-six. Tech number one. Crit threat. Can the alchemical golem be crit? No. Okay. Uh, you rock it though. Number two. Also hit. Number three. Lucas's two hits are amazing. Net 20. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> you hit it three times. <laughs> Number four. All style. You old style, mate. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's just kind of pissing liquid as you're beating the crap of it. Things are bending the wrong way. There you go. 52, 52, 48, the little, 46. The little brain stem and the, uh, uh, the little brain and the, uh, <laughs> and the eyeballs looking around. Uh, so 50, it looks like 152, 198 damage. Uh, it took all four swings to down it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. You hold still. Hold still this. Hold still that. Oh. There is a... Nasty looking puddle that is emanating from it about here. It doesn't seem to bother the ghouls, but you don't like the look of the look of the liquid that's leaking from it. That's it for me. Okay. Thurgus just going to town. I'm gonna to remove the alchemical golem from the initiative. <laughs> uh the monks. Uh this monk is going to respond to the bag and try to attack Makronam. It's going to do, because uh, it's a creature, a full round action to get all three of its attacks off. Oh, sorry, little buddy. I'm not bodyguard right now. Makronom's AC. Uh-oh. Uh, I've is, got him at 22. He has... Mage armor, bark skin plus three, and a shield oh. spell up. And he does not wear a uh, natural armor item. So does he wear bracers? Give me a second. He wears bracers plus two. So so mage armor gives him a plus two. Barksim would give him a plus five. Now. And then shield would give him a plus nine. He's got an AC uh, of... Uh, um, I've got 30. Haste? Haste, 31. 
Okay, he gets hit twice instead of oh, no. all three instead times. Instead of three times, that's yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. Are these natural attacks or are these flurries? Uh, these are natural attacks. He takes a total of 15 damage from the two strikes. And? And, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Makes fortitude saves. And I heard the end in there. And there's two fortitude saves he needs to make, and that last attack might actually be a hit, yeah, depending on how successful he is. Uh, as he tries to not be paralyzed, plus two from Good Hope. Whoops. I rolled a five plus 13 is 18. That's not enough. Shit. All right, so Makarnam went paralyzed on the first hit, which means he got hit an additional time. Would he have made it if I gave him a fortune point? He'll be okay. Yeah, because you can't, because these things can't coup de gras as single actions. So yeah, Makarnam basically goes really stiff. His tentacles kind of flop to the ground, and um, he's kind of leaking a little bit. And the ghoul monk is still just ripping, trying to rip him to shreds. He took twenty-four damage. Uh, Makarnam, for just people at home, has a hundred and fifty-two hit points. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be okay <laughs> he's being scratched right now uh he however not moving is also a bad thing i'm Which... worried but i am excited about ghoul Cronome. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's always for you <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. i love the voice Tim. Yeah. <laughs> he also has to make two saving throw so i'm going to mark at the top of his character sheet that he has been uh exposed to ghoul fever um of course he has to one one exposure of ghoul fever and this lasts for he got hit three times so the highest of these numbers he is paralyzed for four rounds. No, Mark and Mom. Interesting fact: you can fly. Just so you know. Okay, that was that was. The monk. Uh, this ghoul monk is attacking Thurgus. I think it just needs twenties to hit. Just. There's a nat twenty there on the go. first one. It claws at you for eleven damage. Yeah, two fort saves. Is that what I heard? Uh, just just the one. Oh, well, it's only twenty-three. Uh, that's good enough to not be paralyzed. And then it missed on the other two. You took eleven damage. I don't know if you have any dr. Uh, is it what type of damage? Slashing. Uh, it'll be claw damage. So I think it's slashing and um. Might be bludgeoning actually. Piercing? I'll look it up. Yeah. I, I know bites are all three. I think claws yeah. are slashing and think... piercing. Okay. If that's the case, then I'll take nine. Okay. And then this ghoul monk hops up onto the table and then launches himself in an acrobatic twirl through the air, trying to avoid Thurgus's blade, but also trying to grab at uh, the the flying thing that tried to take control of it. So the first thing I need to roll is its acrobatics check to see if it can, um, if it can uh, not incur an AOO from Thurgus, whose blade is hungry for undead flesh, apparently. Does the slippery floor mess with it at all, or since it's moving uh, out of it, Oh, good? give me a second. So the slippery floor... It's only, a D it's only a 10. Is a DC 10 acrobatics check to move through? Nope. I feel like these guys are super... No, so that cost strong. him basically 20 feet of movement. He has enough movement to get up there. And monks of this level are always considered running when when jumping. Um, so it's like crouching tiger, hidden ghoul. Uh, yes. And... Uh, I don't like that. 
Okay, let's see if he can make this acrobatics check. Gets a 31. Uh, CMD 41. All right, so Thurgus, you get an AOO as it's running, as it's jumping towards... Oh, cut it out of the air for me. <laughs> uh, 39 to hit. Yeah, you, you do cut into its arm. Max damage. 45, 45, it bloodies the creature. You cut off you cut off its arm, but it's still reaching to, uh, towards the professor with the other one. Does, Here we go. When you fail an acrobatics check, don't you stop in the square that you provoke the AOO or something? Uh, no, I don't remember. No, he, that's, that's if he was trying to move through you. Um, oh, okay. He failed to avoid the AOO is what he got did uh, on this one. So he jumped right into your blade, got knocked a little bit, and then he kind of, like puts his arms backwards and is basically moving in for the bite. His, his head is almost perpendicular, or is, uh, is almost parallel. Like it, it just, his head is cracked all the way back and coming at you like a shark. Um, you, by you, I mean the professor. Yep, I hear him coming. Uh, and he's trying to attack me, right? Yep. Uh, I will spend an arcane point as an immediate action. <laughs> you rolled a two on his attack roll. Uh, I'm going to do this immediate action thing, um, though, What's... to increase my AC. Your, your AC is worse than 20? Uh, I think I have to do it like right when it attacks, right? Uh, as an immediate action to grant himself a shield bonus to AC equal to his... Yeah, so would I have to declare it as it's attacking before you roll or yes i mean you said it before you read the numbers so. sure yep yeah i mean I, I had to do it yeah so it will uh add like a a bunch so yes okay so this nasty ghoul face coming straight towards you as you throw up the shield spell it kind of crunches into the face and then falls down beside thurgus <laughs> You know, it looks at its arm, which is just leaking. It's missing. It's missing its claw, uh, which is crawling around on its own, trying to find a good place to die. Um, that was too close. I think that was all the. Folks. Yeah, yeah, not a bad. Uh, the one on the bottom left didn't attack, did he? Uh, yeah, he scratched against Thurgus a bunch. Oh, that's right. He did. Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, okay, it's the one on the right that was the that second mark. <coughs> Professor. <laughs> In the telepathic bond. Yeah. Oh, too uh, busy in here for me, lads. Oh, yeah. Through the telepathic bond, and I will move out here. Hello, fantasy. Oh, just pardon me. Excuse me. And I will uh, draw a card from the deck of the loot. Okay. He, uh, professor made it through the shimmering thing. Fine. Yep. You made okay. it through. Fine. Uh, so, uh, should we roll a percentile? Yeah, do you have a sheet for this? Yeah, two of them should be crossed out, because I did it. How did we mark those? Oh, yeah, the Cloud Giant Ten of Hearts has been done. I think that's the only one we've used so far. I think so. Oh, where, where should I find this? Uh, it's under characters, under magical servants, on the bottom under summon Deck of Illusions. Got it. And how are you? How are you tracking which ones are used? Uh, I'm just crossing them out as I use them. Okay. Strike through. Got it. So there's. We need like a number column on here. On it. You are a champion of the computers. Computers? How is it pronounced? I hear they're all the rage this, this year with the internet. <laughs> with the World Wide Web. <laughs> yes. I remember in school when they would teach you, like, you gotta remember this www. That stands for World Wide Web now. <laughs> yeah, give me a D so D thirty eight, and then if we if we hit one that we've already used, we go on to the next one. 
Roll again. 1d38. 20. Woohoo. Right. Dirtiest of 20s. It, it is the uh, three of staves, which creates three human clerks. <laughs> okay, well, they're going to be in this hallway uh, on the landing behind Ferrisse. They'll be like, um, throw them down right here. Uh, I think they will. One of them will probably be like uh, groveling in a f in the group and will make noises like, oh, 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 and like kind of shying behind the other ones. One, I think, will be like maybe big and fat, and he's like, oh, 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 oh. he can't say we'll see here, but he's kind of like trying to make an attempt to guard the stairwell with his girth here. Uh, and the other one is very thin and just like has a sourpuss face, you know? He's just like, maybe he's the leader, even though he's not the biggest one. Uh, and yeah, they will attempt to guard the retreat. Uh, they're like function as major images, so they can't say anything, but they'll be blustery in their silly comedy trio-esque manner. Okay, and they're guarding which way? Uh, the down the stairs, the way we came. Yep. So if anybody was coming up towards us, the direction we've already covered, uh, there is just going to be a constant chaos of illusions you'll have to sort through as you follow our trail. Got it. All right, so they are occasionally like glowing slightly as they make prayers to some god that isn't isn't very descript, uh, and they are guarding your path. Cool. Uh, uh, and then I will say uh, the clerics uh, are not real. Uh, they should cover our backsides for the moment, though. Okay, Zephyros. Zephyrus is going to take a swipe. Weird. Take a swipe, and then I think you muted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why did I? It's okay, you know. me. Interesting. Sometimes when I mark this, it mutes my camera. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It Wait. may just be me. Um, Obviously, it's me. So Zephyrus is going to take a swipe at this guy uh, with his scythe again. Okay. And uh, I Neil, what... the uh, key binding for mute is spacebar. So if you have VC as the active window, you will mute yourself. Yeah, that's what's happening. That is, that's very interesting. And the key binding for map tool to point with the arrow is spacebar as well. <laughs> that makes sense. So okay. it's just a timing issue that I have to sort out. And I will change the key binding from mute on VC. Yeah, that just, just click map tool. You know, you know. In all the years that I've used these two things, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, you're not using. You're not clicking back to the VC tool. Correct. You yeah. just have your map tools. You're active. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, well, there's a fix for me. VC, I'll go fix VC that. is just you guys. It's like. All righty. Uh, so back with it. Uh, Zephyrus is going to attack this guy with his side. Uh, yeah, he, is... he does look, this creature does look like it wants to tear Mokronom open, but it's concerned about these two big bruisers that are nearby. Yeah, is Bartsong up and running now? Yep. Yeah. All right, so that means I get an ex extra three. So my attack roll goes 1d20 plus 21 now. Uh, where am I? Yeah. So this is a 34 attack. Uh, the monk twists out of the way, but at the last moment, uh, it bumps into Thurgus right back to your side. Thurgus, I'm so glad you're there. <laughs> yeah! I'm still smashing the alchemical golem to pieces. <laughs> All right. And we said my, so my damage was going to be 2d6 plus 11 plus 2 for good hope is 13. Uh, do I get anything for bard song or haste? Three. Three from Bardsong. Three. Three from Bardsong. Okay. So, so 11, 12, 13, so it becomes 16. And I'm assuming he doesn't get the Necromantic's damage as well? No, but the 23 damage is enough to cave its its head in. It's, it crumples to the ground. That was All one right. attack. Uh, you still have two actions and your haste attack left. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step forward if I can. Oh, I, uh, can I share square with this monk and Mokernum? Probably yeah, not. Mo the monk is dead, so yes, and Mokernum's tiny, so yeah, or small, so yes. All right, and then is this guy still within reach for me? Yep. All right, so I will take a swing at him as well. Uh, this is going to be my haste attack, which is that... Does that count as, as a primary or as a secondary? Yeah, it's a secondary attack. Secondary. So my 21 reduces by 5, so my 21 becomes a 16. Yep. Uh, so this is a 33 on attack. Yeah, they last round dropped their defenses a little bit to try to hit better, and uh, that that actually strikes all right so 2d6 plus 16 again 21 damage okay injuring that one very badly softening it up for thurgus um all right so and then i and then i still have my secondary attack because i just took my haste attack yep this, this one would be at minus 10 i mean i might as well <laughs> i might as well give it a try uh, so my previous one was plus 16, so this becomes 2d6 plus 11. 17. That's a miss. It scrambles out of the way. Pharisee. Uh, I still have a move action, right? Nope. That was it. You're, you're... Oh, I moved. Sorry. That's right. You attacked, you five-foot stepped, you attacked again, and used a haste tech. Yeah, I forgot about the five-foot step. Yep. Uh, I'm going to let Bard Song linger. Okay. And I'm going to move over a little bit to get uh, to get a little bit cleaner view of, of just this thing and continue concentrating on the detect magic. Okay. Uh, so that's round two. Uh, and you're concentrating on a specific aura. Yep. There... There is one very potent aura that might be disguising some smaller ones, but I think that's what you want uh, to look at. Okay. And it does encompass the the shimmer that you're seeing. Okay. Mokernam, paralyzed. He's not moving. Thurgus. All right. I'm going to start with this guy right here. Number three. Okay. Ah! <laughs> These mucks are trying to scramble back at this point. 39. AC 39 is a hit. AC 47, 47. is a hit. 35. And, oh, uh, 42. That last, or no, 30, 37. That one should be minus 10 as well. I think with Thurgus, they only take one hit a piece before they, they get ripped apart. Uh, okay. Well, we've, he'll hit one, hit another one, and then he'll start double tapping them. Got it. Just turning them into some ghoulish mush. Yeah, 46, 46. destroys the first one. The plus and 35. 51 on the second. Yeah. All right. And then you start kind of crushing their skulls. Uh, I think, oh, yeah. I think that's it for this room. Uh, so we'll do the actions for the remaining characters for the round, and then we'll break it a con. Uh, Professor, are you doing anything? Uh, yes. I will fly into the room, into the middle of it, and I will draw another card from the deck and drop it in the middle of the chaos. Okay. Uh, 1d38, a 14, the 10 of diamonds, 7 of staves, male half-orc barbarian. <laughs> nah, and he's just gonna be like smashing his barbarian giant axe into the like carnage of the monk bodies just like lost in rage just smashing everything in the room over and over and over all right so... How, don't come close to him if you're any alchemists investigating this oh this what happened here there's a half work barbarian loose in the tower how, how long do these illusions last forever until the spell they're permanent Images. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> so anybody coming behind us, it's going to be a day, you know? What's going on you know, in this for tower, craft guys? wondrous item, these are really cheap <laughs> for your gold pieces. <laughs> yeah, these things, this thing's cool. I've had it in the back pocket ever since we came across that illusory dragon. And finally, I think this is the right moment to just just throw the deck out. As we walk level to level, just... Leave a little little surprise for every room. Leave a little chaos, huh? Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's that's the professor. Darian is a sword. Zephyros, are you taking any actions? Pharisee before the end of the round, and then your your spell. We'll do we'll do uh, Zephyros first. Space bar. Sorry, Zephyros is going to do a spell recall. He's going to recall the lightning bolt that he cast earlier. Okay, Machina, I'm just going. And it only costs you one point. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's clear to have a constant burp coming out of Mokronom. Uh And then Ferrise, you're you you are now getting a clear look at this aura. Yes. Uh, give me a spellcraft check, and I'm going to give you a synergy. If you have five or more ranks in knowledge planes, you gain a plus two. I do have five of my ranks in Knowledge Planes, and my Spellcraft is plus 24, 1d20 plus 26, 41. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Ferrise, you see that this doorway bends uh, whoever's typing, can we mute that a little bit? Thanks. Uh, Ferrise, you can see that the doorway or some magic that is around the doorway uh, is folding space. Um you think there is at least three folds and this doorway okay. leads to yes. one of the folds we'll call it the second uh the second space oh. space fold space fold space Fold space, is that four? Four spaces, three folds. Uh, and, this, I see. And, this, and this leads to the second space. Okay. This, I'll step across. Yep. This, uh, this room seems to be one of three in this location. And the staircase... This staircase leads into this version of it. It's it's folded like it's folded on itself in 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 different ways, and and the stairway and that door are what uh, are what lead are what connect. If that makes any sense. So you're saying we've got to go back down, take a different stairway to come back here to a different here. Something like that, yes. Thurgis, that kind of makes your mind spin a little bit. That's why it was so confusing running through this place when you were trying to find your way out. Or we could just keep going level by level unless we want to start uh, doing some geometry uh, calculators. I I'm game for it if you are the calculations, Thurgis. Well, what happens if I leave through one of the other doors on this floor? Uh, I don't know. Um, I suspect that, that the doors, each door is connected to its own stair, but it then might be, if we go down in a different stair, we might not arrive at the same down as this. Oh, that sounds terrible. We should do all the floors on one staircase at a time. It will be less confusing. Rational. Rational. Sure. I'll quick stow my uh, command undead wand. 
if we're done in here, uh, I may uh, summon a little help for myself quickly. Uh, I'm going to look around for bear corpses and or my baby blanket. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll follow and, and keep an eye out as well and keep detecting Viz up. Or, sorry, detect uh, Magic up. And I will... Good. Do uh, essentially one loop around the room uh, behind Thurgis. Yep. So yeah, I will. I'm going to spend some time with Mokranum, yeah, just it, checking that Mokranum's okay. You are seeing weird bends in in that same space magic at the other yeah. doorways. Uh, they are um, similar, but you'd have to study each one individually to get more information. Yeah. Uh, you're going to pick up Makarnam? Yeah, I think at this point in time, um, the haste is gone. I don't know if you stop Greater Invis, or is that actual Greater Invis the spell, Professor? Uh, it's actual Greater Invis the spell. Okay, so at this point in time, you've, you've, you've talked for about 30 seconds, so your Greater Invis is about to go down. The haste is gone. Uh, you pick up Makarnam. Makarnam eventually... Argh! He He seems to come come to it's full of pins pins and needles and and goose pimples now while those guys were walking around the room once they had passed this section of the room i will take off uh, another piece from my robe of bones and throw it in front of me and then once it it like spawns i'll try and command undead it with the wand as fast as i can okay so you kind of chuck a little bone from your robo bones over top of this uh, uh of this uh thing what bone are you tossing uh i'm doing the tough human zombie Okay. Yeah, I feel like my mic didn't used to pick up a keyboard before. It's so weird. Alright, so uh, a zombie appears. Uh, you, can ah. out, you can outsmart the zombie as it's starting to like get its bearings and move around. Uh, it's a mindless creature, so I think your spell automatically succeeds. Yes, well, uh, let's say you're Juan Carlos now. Uh, be a good lad. Daddy needs a meat shield. Uh, stand in the way if anything tries to hit me. Come now. Oh. And I will proceed out of the room. <laughs> Which way? Uh, I'll go back towards the stairwell with the with uh, where the party's at. I'm, Assuming we're going back up the stairwell and doing this floor by floor. Yeah, I think our plan, not knowing like the specifics of how this thing works, is to go back to the same stairwell and try and do however many we can go up there and then go back down to the bottom and do a different stairwell and go all the way up, if that makes sense. Yes, I can see it now. I see Thurgis's thoughts <laughs> washing over me. <laughs> Thurgus's primary concern is that, like, if he goes through one of these doorways, he's not going to know what fold he's going to come out. And if he goes back through the doorway, because he saw Ferrisay, right? Like, it's not like he went through and he went to a random place and then went back out. We were able to see in and out consistently. Mm -hmm. That so, certainly seems to be true, yes. Yeah. So my, my vote would be to do every floor on a single stairwell and then go back down to the basement, or the, the first floor. I think Thurgus is correct. That just seems <clears throat> elegant and logical to me. Thurgus so thinks all those things, but so, what he says is, ah! the, yeah. <laughs> the professor also just realizes he never cast telepathic bond on anyone, so he's thinking these thoughts into his head, assuming people heard him. But so the the, the doors <laughs> do push in. I do have telepathic bond on me. Do you? I do. I have it crossed out. Yes, I did cross it out. I didn't write it on my character sheet. All right, so it sounds like everyone's collecting back into this hallway. I believe so, yeah. All right. You've got the stats for your zombie? Uh, yeah, I will pull them up, yeah. Okay. Follow your senses, Thurgis, too. If, if your, your plan's a fine one, but uh, if you see anything that's like, that's the place, we're with you. All right, I'm going to roll a d4. If I roll a 1, there are people on the stairway as you're going up. Nope. 
the stairway is weird and echoey. Uh, Farisay, you're convinced this has to do with uh, the bending of space. Yes. And you guys go up the stairs. I'm just going to... You're at the next level up. If I have a regular zombie token, I just apply some kind of like tough descriptor to it, right? Uh, they they should have pre-made tough. Uh, give me a second. There's no link. Uh... In PFSRD, are you buried? Tough human zombie token. Do you want to just call it a? F uh, you could also make it a uh, a tough zombie. Could also be just an advanced zombie. Whatever you think is like fair on it, it's not going to be super strong. It's just like a zombie off this Roma bone. It's just a meat shield. So meat shield comes out of this thing. Yep, it's basically going to be a uh, an advanced zombie. Perfect. Thank you. Which effectively adds two to all things. Uh, is a way of looking at it. Okay. All right. Uh, so you, you go up the steps, and there is uh, another doorway. The steps do continue upwards. Um, you thought you heard a door slam, maybe down below, although it's echoey and it could be coming from other towers or other spaces. Uh, this place does have. Um, uh, lettering on the door and it says um, restricted gallery uh, while we're all standing here I will spell recall haste and cast it on us I'm gonna let Mokronom take a look uh, oi Mokronom how you feeling can you take a look at this door oh yeah the thing the thing had really cold claws and made me all goose pimply but uh, let me have a look look see here uh, oh, it's a door. And ever the wise have a sec. <laughs> and ah, uh, it's got no pinchers or no stabbies or uh, no crushers. Uh, the doors do move in. Uh, they they're locked. Pop it open. Okay. And while he's doing that, I'm going to refresh Warrior Spirit. Oh, wait a second. I see it now. Um, it's, there's an arcane lock on the door, and there's one of those chimey dealies. I can see it peeking oh. through a little bit. An alarm, of course. Yeah. Hmm. There's a little spot right here. Uh, good, good hope is what allowed him to see the nice everything <laughs> can you disable the alarm oh, i can try here we go we haven't been especially quiet it's not like they're going to be surprised to find us here i think at this point it's worth a try though oh. he rolled a one he got a 24 the dc is 25 plus spell level which is 26 does haste help at all? Nope. <laughs> no. Let me check. To, let, me, uh, let me check his fortune points. Does actually? I can. I can help with this. I think. Ah! Oh, you can see. You can see. He was trying to pull out a tool. It hit one of his teeth. Gallant inspiration. 
it started tumbling towards the alarm spell. He started. He's one of his one of his tackles trying to grab it. Oh! Gallon inspiration. What is two d four competence bonus as an immediate action to an attacker skill check? Um. Go ahead. So I I will do that. Two d four. Three. And that's a flourish. Competence. And that's a flourish. Did you have to have Bard Song running? I did not have to have Bard Song running for Gallon Inspiration. Okay. Ha! Ah! He grabbed the tool. Ha! Ah! Little tentacle. <laughs> Wipe some milky sweat off of his brow area, I guess. <laughs> and then he's oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. No chimes. I got it! He waves the tool to you as he's putting the tool in, into his back. Well pocket. done. Now the... Uh, uh, and then the lock? Oh, yeah, the lock is a good lock, but the arcane lock makes it a really good lock, so this is gonna be hard. Yeah. Just give me a minute here. Just, just give me a little, a little second here, okay. Uh, it's long... Long stringy eyeballs coming out of Mockernom, some tendrils. Maybe we just gotta work here. Oh, uh, uh, no. It's hard to fit the tool in. Mm, indeed, indeed. For, th for those that re upped haste, uh, the lock attempt did take up one round plus the round before that he was uh, trying to get the. Okay. Uh... Oh, uh, you want me to try again? Nope, my turn. And I attack the door. Uh, you want an attack roll? Uh, no. Uh, are you trying to just break the door open with one yeah. with one heave, or are you trying to damage the door? Uh, I am not trying to strength check it. I'm trying to damage the door. Okay. I'm trying to splinter the door basically with an adamantine weapon. Right where the lock is, right? Yeah. Okay. You just want a damage roll? I just want a damage roll. Yeah. Uh, okay. No bard song. Let me double check. Uh, oh, what the hell? Oh, rage. <sighs> and I am going to make this a destructive smite. Fifty-seven points of damage. Okay, uh, the number I had in my head was 50 damage, so in a single swing, you break the lock and the locking mechanism, and the door kind of kind of cracks open a little bit, and you can see in, there is a creepy dark curtain that is squaring off the center of this room. Uh, Thurgus, you've never been in here, although there are a lot of bloody tracks, um throughout the room and it does look like whatever is behind the curtain has been leaking into several drains there are, there are some incense burners that look like they are they are slowly burning to, to perhaps uh, combat a smell that you guys cannot smell because of your um, life bubble it was called the gallery Restricted gallery. Uh, I'm going to move into the room and pull back the curtain. Okay. Uh, so you attacked and then moved and then you're pulling back the curtain is your last action? Yeah. Okay. There is a neat room. You're hasted. You have an attack still. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what's on the other side of the curtain. <laughs> there is... A, we're going to call it a unit of rotten, um, defaced, defouled, but standing at attention, Patrian guard. You now know where the paladins went. Oh, no. They are armed. Their holy symbols of various uh, goodly deities have been uh, uh, defaced, hanging upside down. Some of them, uh, some of them look like they've got rotten garlands around their necks. 
these creatures um, do react uh, to Thurgus appearing and they all kind of snap to attention and look towards him. They are armed with bows and swords and have heavy armor and um, they're a veritable military unit. One might call them a troop. There is a profaned troop of Patrian paladin officers that is standing before you. I think we're rolling for initiative. That would make sense. I think so. All right. So by this point, because Thurgis was in a rush, you only used up three haste uh, rounds. Uh, who cast the haste? Professor. 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 And what caster level are you? Ten. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, so haste will go down in eighth round of combat, and I'm going to same as warrior spirit. I'll mark it. Okay. And oh, actually, we're... mine goes down sooner because mine's only a minute, so I'll go down seven. The prof the profane Patrian guard acts as one. These guys look rough. <laughs> These were the best of the best before they died, right? I think they don't let just anybody into the Patrian Guard. At one point, it had some standards. At one point. <laughs> I mean, they are clustered. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> They are that. <laughs> they are that. Are you they don't they look, look super dodgy either, let's just say. <laughs> I, I like your instincts, guys. Your instincts uh, will serve you well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. The, no. prof the profane Patrian Guard officers and paladins, which would kind of make them anti-paladins, uh, get a plus six on their initiative as a unit. And let me roll the random initiatives and populate. You're lucky that you saw the alarm spell. Ah, uh, yes. We surprised them. <laughs> Somehow, Thur they got an at 20, and Thurgis goes first. <laughs> oh, that's right! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they, 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 they all basically respond to Thurgis pulling back the curtains a little bit. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of them in here, Thurgis. Mm, what do I want to do? Uh, well, my instinct is to smash. That's what Thurgis does, so... Thurgus is going to smash. I have no idea how effective this is going to be, but I'm just going to give you some attack rolls and you tell me what happens. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I do not have Inspire Courage, uh, but I do have Haste. I am... I'm actually going to say I'm still raging, if that's okay. So I'll burn the rounds. Uh, yeah, you, <clears throat> just, you would have spent one round getting through the door and moving up to here. And this will then... be round two? Yeah, this is round two. Okay. Um, I am not, I already burned a destructive smite, so we're good there. And this is, I don't have my judgment up because that was last combat. Um, they look undead, right? They do not look like they're alive, but they are mobile. Okay. I'm going to choose, my first action is going to be to activate Bane. Greater Bane undead. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. And then I'm going to take my haste attack and two more attacks. Uh, are Does Bane work? Because it gives my weapon an extra plus two. Uh, it, it does. Okay. So then these will be 30. Normally it's an action to identify a creature unless you can do it quicker. 34, 30. I'm just guessing. It's undead. So, I don't know. Uh, one, 20 plus four. 
Uh, do you need me to look up the Bane ability, actually, to see if it requires me to identify? Nope. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so this will be tech number one, tech number two, tech number three. 45, 41, and 26. Uh, two hits. Is it only regular Bane? For some reason, I thought it was Greater Bane. I think it's only regular Bane. Maybe Greater Bane. Oh, that's a 12. Okay. So plus 2d6. Sixty-one and fifty-nine. <laughs> okay, uh, so one hundred and twenty damage. Uh, Thurgus begins carving into these in, into these into these knights. He's killing them by uh, uh, by twos and threes per hit, um, but they're all lurching forward at once, and the troop is still quite active. The troop's That's turn funny. is going to basically five foot step towards Thurgus. That wasn't a five step. They're out of step, apparently. Yep. They, while Thurgus is killing them and hurting the troop, um, he hasn't dispersed uh, their numbers completely. The troop is so it steps forward, it ends its turn adjacent to a foe, which means they automatically do damage to Thurgus. And, um, as arrows begin to fly and many, many weapons of war, many of which have been serrated and look distinctly not Paladin-esque any longer. Do they look adamantine-ish? No, your DR oh, will apply enough. against... Um, single damage roll you're not good are you thurgus mm, i'm pretty sure i'm chaotic neutral chaotic neutral okay uh they do 20 damage you could subtract chaotic dr neutral. from the 20. okay uh so thurgus is being stabbed then um they are going to activate a spell as a quickened action uh, which is a, so they moved. Oh, what is that? The damage is just free, right? It doesn't take an action. It's just when they end their turn adjacent. Correct. Okay. I think they can uh, as an action, but... Uh... Oh, by running through you or something? Yep. Got it. All right, there is a an arrow that flew past um, the group, and you there is a pop in your ears as you guys were coming down the stairs, and you cannot cannot hear. Does it affect the pathic bond as well, or just our physical ears? Uh, just your physical ears and the bard song. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know if bard song was running. It wasn't up yet. Okay. So that's one move. I'm just going to have to dance. Their damage, a quicken silence spell. Uh, they also have. Do you need like a save versus distraction or something from me? I don't know if they. I no, they're, they're they're not like swarms. Okay. Uh, but they are with their move. They have one more attack. They are going to fire arrows in a line. Ooh. And the line is 110 feet. So they barrage, they basically fire, they're ducking off to the side and firing into this, um, uh, into this hallway. Everyone in this area gets a reflex save. It 
it's yeah, only it's only an arrow. Yeah, it's just a hail of arrows. Uh, reflex save DC twenty two. Thirty, but no evasion. Okay. Seventeen. Twenty six. What was the DC? Twenty two. Professor makes it. Uh, Icky Mesa. Twenty-three. Out of thirty as well. Okay. And uh, Icky you, Mesa should have evasion since he's a familiar. You take half damage, and it is a weapon attack, so DR would apply after uh, after the half damage. Uh, did Juan Carlos make it? <laughs> Probably <laughs> not. Is, Probably. Uh, yeah. What is? I don't think. Juan uh, Carlos he 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 too. fails, so he takes twelve damage. Uh, it's piercing. He needs uh, slashing against him. So he takes seven and is still standing. <laughs> All right, one Carlos. Good job, oh, little buddy. Yep. I rolled from Mokronom as well in case he had to. So if he had to, he failed as well. Uh, no, I, I already rolled for Mokronom. Oh, uh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I didn't see. He made it by two. I rolled the seven up top. Okay. Yeah, he, so Mokronom evaded. He just kind of went flat to the ground. And then it, it's, it, you know, like maybe half a dozen... Uh, maybe a dozen arrows or so find uh, uh, go flying into this hallway. Zephyrus missed. Well, Zephyrus is going to get hit. Okay. Yeah, the professor dodged it, so he takes half damage. What was the damage? Twelve. Uh, if you take half, it's six. Thank you. Okay. I'm guessing like uh, move, spell, attack, automatic damage to those nearby. That is the that is their turn. However. Thurgis, you notice that the troop is disguising and hiding a leader in the middle of it. Interesting. I think we dragged a ghoul monk with Zephyrus' token when we came here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the professor's... Oh, that's right. Okay. Sorry, that's right. Skeleton is a human zombie. Tough human zombie. But right. Guan Carlos, the meat shield. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it looks like one of the senior alchemists, but he's definitely succumbed to death um, like the paladins around him. Uh, and he's going to throw a bomb at Thurgus. The service... I'm going to attempt to deflect. Nice. Do you say anything about it in the telepathic bond when you see him? Uh... <laughs> uh, well, actually, what you would hear is, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> but like that's all you hear. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, attack roll thirty four. I take my power attack penalty on this. So forty one versus whatever Ooh. his attack roll is. Yeah. EC thirty touch with the bomb. Uh, forty one to deflect. But I might have thrown it backwards into the hallway with all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> It goes one square away in that direction. So it explodes here. Uh, it, it was a splash or something. It was a tangle foot bomb. Uh, you're, oh, you're, you're not in danger of being stuck to the floor, but you are still in danger of, of getting the entangled condition. So I do need a reflex save from you. Okay. The I'm DC's 16. 22. 16. 26. Okay, hey, you managed to get just, you managed to get the goo away from you. <laughs> Oh, looks sticky. Uh, and yeah, it does look like Thurgis. You're going to need to wade through all these paladins to get at the uh, <laughs> at the bomber that it's in the middle. Of, um... I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so that was this guy's attack. He is of a level. What's that... going on in there? He can. I'm doing my thing. <laughs> Least useful status update. So eighth level, eighth level alchemist, you can get fast bombs, which means he gets to do a bomb every attack. Now yeah. these are at iterative attacks, so he's going to switch up his bomb to something else. If they're if he's making attack rolls against me, ranged attack rolls against me, I'm going to try and swing against every single one. Okay, uh, AC thirty touch. Uh, this one's in theory, fiery. In theory, this would touch. Um, Four again. Thirty-eight. <laughs> you knock that one away. It lands two squares away. Oh no! 
<laughs> Did I blow up the party? One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. So two squares away lands beside the troop, which means the troop needs to make a reflex save versus the splash damage, which is funny. <laughs> Oh, so messy. <laughs> when you're throwing grenades. Uh, okay. It's got a decent reflex save. Uh, it makes the save. It, it doesn't take the additional damage. So that they just kind of move off to the side. All right. So this is the profane Patrian guard plus an alchemist bomber at the center. Professor, what are you doing? Ooh, that is a good question. I you, you, and and you can you cannot hear. Yeah, I will be talking to uh, Thurgus through the bar. Uh, Thurgus, what are you doing in there? What's happening? A whole bunch of awesome stuff. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> uh, I will fly in, and I, as I'm going in, once I pass through the barrier, do I still feel the silence around me? Is it still quiet? Yep. Uh, I'll keep going. Do, does it look like anything's noticing me as I enter the room? They look very focused on Thurgus at this point. Of course, uh, the, of course, there's like twenty of them, so it's hard. It's hard to figure out if any of them have seen you. Yeah. Right. So I've gone twenty so far. Okay. Now you can hear. Uh, yeah, I think... They're all whispering profanities. I'll go all the way oh, back. Oh, that's what you meant by profane. <laughs> I think Juan Carlos will try and follow at some point, but um, when I am here, I will I think, quit... I think there was a South Park episode about curse words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the profanity, yeah, yeah. Um, quit draw the wand of command undead. Uh, Thurgis... Which one looks the beefiest? Oh, maybe uh, I'll just pick one in the middle. Uh, maybe that one. None of them. Uh, do I see the like the? Thurgis looks the beefiest. The the powerful one in there, or do I not notice him in the melee? Ah, uh, you can see him. Okay, I see. There's obviously one that looks like fancier than the others. Yep. I will try and aim he, he my command. He has he has a pointy hat. <laughs> yeah, I figure. No, uh, he, he, you, you recognize the robes of an of an alchemist. This alchemist must have pissed off some other alchemist in this tower. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try and hit him with command undead. Okay. Uh and the DC on wands. I can you refresh me what the calculation is? It, it's spell level, which is two. It's my, since I have the wand ability, it's my int modifier instead of the wand level, which is 11. Yep. So we're at 13. Is there anything mm -hmm. else no, that 10. gets factored? No, 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 no. 10 plus 2 plus 11. DC. No, normally it would be the minimum int required to cast a second level spell, which is yep. 12, so plus 2. So you're using plus 11 instead of plus 2. Yes. The DC is 23, is what you're telling me. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to know what the calculation is like, uh, for future reference. Though. But yes, it's 23. Wands, it's the level plus the minimum actually okay. required to cast that level spell. <laughs> uh, he, made the, he made the save, although it's hard, it's hard to tell. <laughs> so tick off another charge. It happens, uh, especially with saver, saver be screwed spells. Uh, that was the Professor Zephyros. Uh, haste is still up, right? Haste is still up. You can see a horrible number of evil-looking Patrian guards in that room, and you can't you can't hear or make noise. Okay, so I can do a, a full move action of sixty feet and still cast a spell because haste is up. Uh, you have overland flight. I do. That's forty 70. plus thirty is seventy. Right. So I, I want to get to about sixty feet you because gotta, that you gets me go, here. You got to go through the door. So, so I will go, let me just see. That would work. No, you, you, the door starts there. So you can okay, get, you and it goes it. how far this side? That, that would work. That yeah. would work, yeah. Uh, essentially right north of Thurgis would work. Okay, so I'll go oh, there. Oh, yeah, all right. 
Okay. okay, so I can go 80 or something like that, right? 70. 70. All right, so Zephyrus will fly up until there. Okay. And then what he'll do <laughs> a, is... A lot of beady eyes of these former paladins of the realm uh, looking at you. Right, and I'm not on the ground. I'm off the ground, just yep. uh, to be clear. And so I'm looking at them a little bit from the top. And I am most certainly going to throw a fireball into that crowd. Uh, this will be an intensified fire, fireball. I will also use the lesser meta magic rod of empower to add a little bit of damage to this. Just, just <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, beef it up. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, so I'm going to throw it as close to the center as I can without hurting Thurgus. You can put me in it. I won't be mad. Yeah, I just want to see what it looks like, so we can take a look. Yep, okay. that's it. All right. That is and smack do, dab. Do you know what you did? You encompassed the entire troop in its formation. Therefore, <laughs> they were not able to block the alchemist. So the alchemist is already is uh, is part of this um, uh, explosion. We've, right. we've we've been tweaking with troop rules for a while, and uh, yeah. You're starting to see a little bit nice. of that. You're basically so, fighting a an elite military unit right now. <laughs> well, yeah. let's see how much damage we can do. Oh, you're going to do a whole pile of damage. I'm going to get the calculator out. Give me a second. Yeah, this is 13d6 plus 5, and then whatever comes out of that times 1.5. Why Why is it plus 5? Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's half my level. Oh, not your cash level. Not my cash level, yeah. And that's the way I'm calculating it. I think that's probably that correct. That makes sense. All right. So the roll is 48, but we still need to add 50% to that. For 72. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay. Uh, their reflex save. Yep, it's 20 plus spell level plus... Uh, they, just they, they failed. Oh, plus evocation, so... 25 all right so what was the, what was the total 72 times and a half right because it's a troop the troops take 50 percent extra damage from area of effect spells so it's double yo that's 108 nice. and they were ever so slightly protected against fire so they subtract 10 from this, but it's not. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, I know. They, they're a bunch of alchemists tinkering with undead, trying to... They gave them some cream or something like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, 98 points of damage is... To each individual. 200, no, 218. The troop itself takes damage. It's still around, but you've... Knocked it to about two thirds of their number. That alchemist, however, is taking the damage as just an alchemist. He rolls a nat one and blows up. <laughs> his his uh, his, his alchemical belt just wasn't protected enough and just exploded in a bunch of alchemical flame. There's this there's this white hot magnesium fire coming out of this melting body at the center of the uh, at the center of the troop. So I just want to make sure I understand you correctly. When you said two seventy five percent of their number, are you saying we killed seventy five percent or seventy five percent remains? Uh, you've killed you've killed perhaps sixty six percent of their number. All right, okay. Thank you. The the troop is still active though. They are they have no morale because they are undead and they are fighting to the to the last. Sure. Um, that was Zephyros doing a ridiculous amount of damage. Makronam. Oh, I think Makronam is going to. <laughs> <That was crazy. laughs> nice dude. He's got fly up too, so he can move sixty. He's just gonna go here and with his long tentacles. He is going to aid Thurgus's attack. <laughs> oh, they look really angry. <laughs> All right, he aids. Uh, Darian is still in the sword, although he would have loved this combat. Uh, Farisay. 
if Darian was here, I would have called. Yeah, this would be a good one. Um, I am going to. Uh, move. Let's see here. I'd like to stay behind Thurgus, so I'm going to move to here and start a performance of dance, like a leaf on the wind. That's how we move through this troop. Okay. And anyone that can see Ferrisay gets Bard Song, basically. Yes. Nice. Uh, th you have a rank. My... You have a Indian rank in perform there. dance. I have seven ranks in perform dance. Nice. You're 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 pretty damn good. Yep. What, what kind of dance? Um, it's it's very fluttery, mm. uh, twirling and and we waving back and forth. <laughs> A dance that can only be accomplished by something with wings. Got it. <coughs> wings and, yeah, as as if they were were leaves and branches. Yeah. Thurgus fighting like a maple, like a maple seed occasionally. Fighting unholy military units apparently is what you're made for. Your turn. Ah, they're all trying uh, to mob you. Another... You you do not want to let them like you don't do do not want to let up on them. Yeah, I will maintain my rage. I will maintain Bane. Yep. Uh, uh, and I'm going to make four attacks. So the first one is with an assist. Uh, then minus five, minus ten, minus ten. Uh, 42, 44, 35, 32. That 32 is a miss. Ooh, okay. Do you have the bard song in there? I do, yeah. I have okay. It. So this is three, four, six. Plus, and that's why my static is going up to 40. There you go. 65, 61, and 63. All right, so Thurgus, your three like attacks. Sauron. Yeah, you are swiping through them, sending them flying throughout the room. <laughs> Uh, cutting off limbs, destroying heads, just roaring uh, in anger. So 65 and 61, we're going to hold off there because between the fireball and your destruction, you have destroyed the troop. However, two... Um, two, four individuals remain. Three... They're likely the individuals at the back. <laughs> uh, and you attack twice to destroy them, so you still have a move and an attack. So you could wade through them and attack one more of them if you wanted. Or, or two attacks with... Um... Yeah, I'm going to make them as... Uh, I already rolled them, so yep. those are at... Uh, the first one is at minus... Hold on a second. What did I roll? I rolled a 35. So we'll call that... It would be minus mm -hmm. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's only a 20, uh, 28 to hit. That still hits their individuals. Okay. Yep. And then uh, the next one would be 3 below that, 25 to hit. Also hit. Yeah. So I would stay where I was at. I would do two swings and just carve them up, and then seeing that there's only a couple guys in the back, just dome them with shards. Okay. From, and just like two just, I'm just two swinging wildly. Two shards rip through individual corrupted paladins, oh, yeah. and uh, and manage to go right through their spines. They fall down in a crumpled heap of rotten flesh and and armor. Um, they look like they've been heavily embalmed, though. Like a lot of their a lot of their liquid had been removed. And there's just like these vicious blood shard great swords just flying through the air. But he's gonna continue to like to keep his stance in the doorway. Like he's he's in the blood rage right now, but he's also still trying to keep in the back of his mind, I need to keep the squishies alive. Okay, this last <laughs> Patrian knight. Uh, let me check their intelligence. Slay living. <laughs> Is that It'd be really funny really? if you just walked up to me and went boop. Is that like <laughs> the ultimate undead spot? Uh, it it does 
a single harm. necromantic power. It's just it's not slay living. <laughs> Hundred points. That'd be a good one. Fuck. <laughs> he points at you, Thurgus. You have to make a fortitude save or be blind. Uh oh. As it casts quicken blindness on you, the DC of this is twenty. Uh, twenty. Uh. Okay. Yeah, my fortitude is great. Oh my god! Why did I say that? <laughs> and you straight up fail it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Huh. How do we remove permanent blindness here? All right, the Corrupted Paladin then moves towards one of the doors. <laughs> has opened up this set of doors. And I'm going to roll a d4. I'm going to say a d3. If I roll a 1, there are people in the, the stairwell. Oh, no. All right find out which people and what's going on tower all right uh the threat if i roll high it's a very high level threat that's in the, that's in this stairwell for whatever reason if i roll low it's oh god oh god is it the big bad? Was he just like going to the bathroom and happened to be walking by the door? <laughs> nice. I mean, I feel like that's a great timing. Thurgus is now blind. <laughs> Maybe Thurgus set off some trap or some sort of alarm, but that's a 1 in 30 chance that somebody's coming down to see what's going oh, on. Oh, wait. Should I? I? I do have a performance going on right now, right? You do. I should be able to saving finale this. Yes, you could cast saving finale. I will saving finale for Thurgis here and give him a second roll. I mean, what are the odds? It's another it's one. one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> that other one. I think that would be delightful. I've, I've done it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's a it's a Thurgus, five percent chance. You shake off the you 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 kind of you're like think of Pharisee's dancing, and you look back <laughs> at Pharisee and you see this warbling form of the Fae begin to appear, and then spots in your vision, uh, in your vision clear, and you are you are not blind. I'll just land Black Widow style. <laughs> <laughs> Thurgis, you know it was her dancing. <laughs> uh, let There's me, one beautiful actually, thing left in this world yet for me to see. One moment. Sorry. Uh, saving finale. Oh, no. You need action components. Verbal and semantic. Oh, you're in a silence. You have to make a concentration check. I think you are probably blind. No, you can make a concentration check. To, to... Yeah, let me look up the rules for silence really quick. Cast a verbal, a verbal spell I'm pretty, now. I'm pretty sure it's like a or something like that. All sound is stopped. Conversation is possible. Spells of verbal components cannot be cast. Oh, never mind. Yeah, for some reason. I'll keep that was... saving finale, and you can save blind. All right, no, you're, you're, like, you're like, you're they... like. Think of her. No, you saw her dancing for a moment, and then, and then it didn't. It didn't quite work. Okay, that one creature is trying to get away uh, after screwing up Thurgus, Professor. Uh, did he open the door? Did the door. The, the door side? is open. You don't see anything immediately on the other side now. Uh, I will. Uh, fly slightly closer, quick draw the command undead wand, and I will try and tag it from across the room with the command undead. Okay. Should be, uh, 10 plus 11 plus 2, DC 23. 
Give me a second. Twenty-four and it's safe. <laughs> They're rolling really well, these undeads. <laughs> uh Zephyrus. Uh Zephyrus might try and step up to this undead and take a swing at him with his No, he's gonna let him go for now. So Zephyrus saw that Thurgus went blind, right? Um, so, yeah. Does, yeah, I mean, could he? Could he have? Yeah, he you, have, you give me a spellcraft check. The DC would have been nineteen. I mean, in our head, we would have heard Thurgus go like, "Oh, yeah. I'm blind. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> Some, right? Some, we know, like, Fergus is... Oh, why is it so dark in here? Like <laughs> Something about, right. where's the beautiful dancing? And then... <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess maybe that was the, the dancing thing. <laughs> so Zephyrus would have rolled, done a spellcraft check 26, so he would have known yeah, this, why Thurgus went blind? This thing ripped off a, uh, a quicken blindness. Um, and so, so Zephyrus would share that with the party. Um... It seemed to come from, like, it had something tattooed into its chest, which got used up like a scroll. Can that be dispelled, or does that need to be healed with some cleric? So I think what's going to happen, I think it's more realistic. I think we have two options. Either we're going to have a conversation here about it uh, during Zephyros' turn and sort of figure out what to do in which case. There's nothing we can do stop this night or we don't talk about this and Zephyros goes at it. I'm thinking we're probably just going to have a very quick banter about what's going on in our heads because, you know, Thurgus going blind is a major blow to us. No, it's not. Thurgus is going to do the rest of this tower blind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we would like to share your optimism, <laughs> though we need some verbal communication to feel optimistic the direction. about it. <laughs> It's, it's a curse, uh, and uh, something maybe that could be healed, maybe broken. Uh, it's only a quickly. flesh wound. I think I we can still fight. Okay, Mockernom's gonna go settle in. Oh, are we stopping that guy? Uh, I think I think Zephyros' turn would probably have been wasted by this conversation that we're having in our heads with a telepathic bond with Thurgus going blind. Would it not? Pretty quick. Yeah, no. you took an action to identify the spell, maybe. No, you, okay. you did Not that. As, you did yeah. that as okay. part of you did that as part of its casting. So you get yeah. your action. Okay, so Zephyrus is going to take a take just a step forward. I think no, he's going to take two steps forward for this thing to get and be in range, right? Yeah. So you 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 fly a little bit forward. That's one move. Yep, and then he's going to take a swing with his scythe at this monster. Okay. Uh, you have three attacks left because haste is up. Right. So uh, haste is up. Is good up up? Yep. Uh, bard song is not up, right? Because you're in a silence bow. Uh, but my bardic performance is up. Yep. Uh, I couldn't even attempt to cast, so... You can it's, see it's her low. dancing, so her dancing is helping. <laughs> All right, so... Quarter of your eye. 21. <laughs> okay, 37. That's, that's a hit. Uh, will he take the necromatic damage or not? Nope. Not. Okay, so it's 2d6 plus 11 damage. Seventeen damage. Plus another five for Good Hope and Bard Song. Right. Oh, that's right. You slice into him. I will take that five off. No, no, uh, no. That's right. Okay, you slice into him. He's hurt. One more attack will probably do it. Okay, so I'm going to attack him again. So the second attack is 21 minus 5, so it's 1d20 plus 16, 25. That hits. Okay, so it'll be the same. 